Okay, everybody. So today we're back. We're gonna do another chord today that is uh, requested last time by someone, and uh, this chord is called the uh, Mystic Chord. Scriabin's Mystic Chord, which he used in Prometheus as well as many of his other piano pieces. So this chord I've known about for a while. I've always wondered what exactly was in it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. The Wikipedia version is. Right, so it's a C, F sharp, B flat, E, A, D. So it turns out that this chord, right, is actually one of many. And it's built off of the whole tone scale, which is... Right, but this is the whole tone scale with a raised uh, fifth note, okay? Actually, that almost sounds Arabic when you play it like that. So uh, basically, the the chord is just the scale, but grouped together and played in a and combined in a way that's not just like this, right? Because this sounds pretty meaningless, but once you spread out the notes, um, it sounds more. I guess it sounds more co coherent. Okay, and we could actually play, play like variations of it. Right? As long as we're hitting those six notes, you know. Okay, so this is the modified whole tone scale. Um, and so for composers like Scriabin and other composers during that time period, they would frequently turn their scales into chords and vice versa. So like whatever chord that they could dream of, like I don't know. So if they thought of this chord, they would just play it out like... Right? That was just their favorite thing to do, apparently. And then they came up with all these crazy names like Mystic Chord and Hexachord and Octatonic Chord. So I figured uh, today we can go ahead and actually demystify this Mystic Chord, okay? So the first thing we want to talk about is that this is based off the whole tone scale. And the whole tone scale has a bunch of variations. <clears throat> the standard whole tone scale, right? And then its counterpart. Um, they're just six notes all evenly spaced, one whole tone apart. Uh, and then so you can just modify any of these notes, right? So if I wanted to do, right, change the sixth note from a B flat to a B, then that's a variation off of this whole tone scale, right? And turns out you can actually create a chord with this. And this is pretty similar to the Prometheus chord. I mean, come on, how different does that really sound, right? <laughs> the whole point of the whole tone scale. Yeah, I guess the whole point of the whole tone scale is that, you know, they all sound kind of similar. It's like shades of the same color rather than completely different colors, like getting, you know, a minor chord and a major chord. That's completely different colors. Whereas this is just shades of the same color. Okay, so that's uh, that's the first variation, and then the second variation will be, you know... So here we keep all the notes the same except for the second note. Instead of... right? And then this one, if we combine it like Scriabin did... Right? This actually sounds kind of tonal, because, because these chords all exist in this uh, F sharp chord family, right? And then the C is all the way at the bottom, this clash is not really that apparent, right? Whereas here, here the clash between the, the A and the B flat is more pronounced versus this, right? Here we're not playing the A, we're playing the G sharp. It's just a much more smoother tone in my opinion. And of course, this is the regular whole tone scale uh, all chorded up. Doesn't sound that bad, actually. So anyways, let's explore another variation. So instead, the fourth note is brought up by a half step, right? So when you play it out, this is like the entire C major scale, and then these two notes. So when you chord this up, you get this. So, does it sound that much different than this? Yes, actually it does. 
And then the original mystic chord again. And then the variation. So we're moving this to here, right? And then. So this actually sounds more free. This sounds more open, you know? Versus, right? That's kind of muddier. It's a little bit more mystical. <laughs> <laughs> so there's six notes total, there's two variations per note, and you can vary one note, two notes, three notes, so you can have up to like, I don't know, one of you math geniuses do the calculation. It's gotta be like at least 256 different possibilities of modifying this whole tone scale uh, in some way and calling it a modified whole tone scale. So I just chose four random variations, I just thought these were good to start with. Uh, but you can play around. So this variation is... So this time we're actually modifying two of these notes, right? Before it's... And we're modifying it to... So that's actually <laughs> very tonal. Right? And then when you play it out... Yeah! So this sounds more jazzy. This is not really... Uh, atonal anymore or whole tonal anymore, right? I actually think the word whole tonal is more appropriate for like, you know, people like Skriabin and Stravinsky. You can't call them atonal because they didn't go to the level of atonality, you know? But whole tonality, in my opinion, is a much better name. <laughs> so, anyways. So this is a, this just sounds like a regular jazz chord with a blue note, right? This E is a blue note because it clashes with the F, but you really could just play, right? Once you get here, you're basically playing a, you know, a B flat major chord with a sus two. So let's just go over the variations again, okay? So this is the original, right? The mystic chord. And then this is the variation one, right? Just more harsh. This one, this one's definitely more mellow, right? and has a little bit different color. And then this one, right? Uh, again, this one is just bolder. It's more open. It's like a stronger coffee. <laughs> and this one, this one is like a jazz wannabe. Like it just want, <laughs> no, just, <laughs> it's trying to be smooth. <laughs> trying to slide right into your DMs. <laughs> okay, now let's try transposing this chord. So let's just move it one whole tone up. So now it becomes, okay. Just moved all the notes one whole step up. And um, I mean, it sounds pretty similar, but you know, with that added E, <laughs> with that higher step up, it does sound a little bit more open, you know? Yeah. So I guess you can play it like... So this actually, whenever you hear this phrase, right? That's a very whole tone phrase, cause, right? So I guess this chord, um... Right, you're gonna be hearing this kind of gesture a lot when you hear like, their notes. Uh, when you hear like these whole tone composers, you know? Right, that's just a very whole tone-ish gesture. So anyway, let's talk about the transposition again. It's right into D and then we can play the variations. So that's variation one versus, right? Still just as harsh, nothing much has changed. Uh, let's see variation two. Oh, I really love this chord. I don't know why, but this just sounds better than, right? The E flat minor, in my opinion, is such a smooth chord. And so this sounds more sophisticated than, you know, which is the basically the same variation, but like one half step down. So I don't know, something about E flat minor, guys, is just a killer common, it's just a killer chord. Uh, use it as much as you can. <laughs> Let's do variation four, which is 
right? Yeah, I mean, overall, I think they all sound, you know, they all sound kind of in this family of this whole tone chord family. Uh, and I, th that's kind of one thing I wanted to talk about really quickly is that with the usual major minor chord paradigm, right? You have the minor chords and the major chords. And then you have the sevenths, like, right? The sevenths, uh, the diminished seventh, right? And they all kind of have like these different colors, like from red to blue to green to yellow. But then with these whole tone scales, Right? The colors that you get with these chords, right? They're much more muddier. They're not as apparent in terms of the differences between each other. And that's why I always think of whole tone chords or six note scale chords as more of shades of the same color. Like there are shades of blue, like light blue to dark blue you know, as opposed to blue, red, yellow, green, you know? So that's, that's what happens when you start using six note scales, basically whole tone scales in your writing is that you're gonna get a lot more shades of the same color as opposed to a bunch of different colors, okay? So let's just go ahead and so let's go back to the mystic chord, right? And now let's kind of just play around with like how it sounds. Right, we can just do some variations off of this as long as we're hitting the same notes. Right, this is the same chord. That's the same chord. And then let's just do a few more. Right, that's more closer together and spelled a little bit differently, but right, that could be used in a very interesting moment. And of course, the whole tone here. And here we go, here's another one. Right, that's more, um, you know, that's more dramatic. That's probably used in a more tense moment. And then we have this one. <laughs> that's a little bit more confused, like, huh? What's going on? <laughs> What's happening right now? <laughs> and then let's, see, let's look at this chord. This is, we're, we're still spelling out the same chord, just in a different way. Just moving some notes around. Yeah, that sounds just a little bit more, um, I don't know, <laughs> kind of just like down in the dumps. <laughs> as long as you have the whole tone scale, you're starting with the whole tone scale, right? You just modify the notes and you start getting these different colors, right? And so all of these different colors you can use in your pieces. You can break out the chord, you can play the chords together. Right? And so, yeah, that's how you kind of paint with music. You just figure out the, so you just figure out which scale you want to use. Those are your paints, right? And then you start combining them in all sorts of crazy ways. As I said earlier, whole tone harmonies are just more nebulous than the regular harmonies, right? And then I think it's important to just touch on the, the whole tone scales uh, counterparts, which are, the oct uh, which are the octatonic scale. Right, the octatonic scale is like, it's like the demented uh, bigger brother of the whole tone scale that you keep locked in the closet, all right? Because no one really wants to talk to him except <laughs> when they need him to like lift up a fire hydrant. <laughs> so the octatonic scale is much more uh, dissonant. And so if you start combining a bunch of these notes, right, you're gonna get some really, really, really atonal stuff. Uh, but the octatonic scale still is not as much as the chromatic scale. Right? If the octatonic scale is the demented older brother, then the chromatic scale is like... <laughs> it's like HIV. Okay, just kidding. It's the scale that you use uh, basically to make a statement, right? Whenever... And chromatic scale actually, because it includes all the notes, 
it, it fits on top of any chord, any scale. Doesn't matter what you're playing, you can just whip out the chromatic scale at any time. And it's not different for the whole tone scale. So anyways, they, they all relate to each other in terms of consonance to dissonance. So the most consonant scale is the uh, pentatonic scale. Right? It's the most harmonious scale. You really can't go wrong with playing any pentatonic scale uh, or its variation in like a piece. Whereas the chromatic scale is the most dissonant, obviously, because everything is just so tightly squeezed together. And then in the middle, these whole tone octatonic scale, the seven note scales, the church scales, the jazz scales, they all have varying degrees of consonance and dissonance, right? So anyways, let's go back to the Scriabin chord, right? And basically, let's improvise off of this because I think that's a good thing to do. Uh, let's really try to understand how this chord is used in a piece because I think it's, 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 a, it's got, you know, it's got this mystic vibe, obviously. Maybe we can add a bunch of tonal chords next to it. Right? And then see how this chord, when it's introduced, influences the whole color, right? It's like, let's, let's start with stuff that we know and then experiment with this chord, as opposed to like already starting off with like a crazy number of chords. And then when this chord comes in, you can't even tell like <laughs> exactly what's happening. Let's go.
Okay, so yeah, I was kind of playing around with the different whole tone scale transpositions as well as modifying some of these notes so that way they were just more colorful, right? And then um, I also, of course, added in a bunch of regular chords, diminished chords, half diminished chords, try to explore exactly how this this chord fits into the whole family of tonality, right? And then one thing I wanted to do is also just to compare it to uh, this <laughs> Stravinsky's Petrushka chord, which we covered in a previous lesson, right? So let's go over the Petrushka chord again. Right, this is basically two major chords stacked on top of each other that are a tritone apart, right? And so the um, the difference between these two chords, right? So one is like this, and then one is like this, right? So what notes are we actually switching out? Is that before it was a C sharp, which clashed majorly with the tonic, right? In Stravinsky's chord, and then in Scriabin's chord, it's a D. It's a friendlier D, okay? And then um, in <clears throat> in Stravinsky's chord, we have the main clashes are. Right, the F sharp and the G and the C and the C sharp. So in Scriabin's chord, the only clash really is the A and the B flat. Right, this is a clash because otherwise, if you have a whole tone note like a G sharp, then there's no clash at all. So um, this is the only clash, which means this note is supposed to be less dissonant than this note, right? And it does sound a little bit brighter but it's not that much less dissonant. And if you play Stravinsky's chord in a different way, like that actually sounds more harmonious or consonant than, you know, than, than Scriabin's chord, right? But rather this chord, this chord, which is uh, Stravinsky's chord, uh, seems to have this more open feeling. Whereas Scriabin's chord, right? This, the, the mystic chord, is more it is more mystical it's more muddier it's more um hidden in the shadows okay and uh, of course sometimes there's no words to describe it right you really can't have you really can't have like a good word to describe the difference it's more felt than understood right but once you play it and then you play these two chords next to each other you know you can really start to feel like uh it's a different color. And um, that's what's great about chord theory and harmonies is that uh, you can start, after you listen to them for a while, you can start figuring out the color differences between the two. Okay, so I hope this lesson helped. All right, let me know what music theory you want me to cover next. See you guys in the next video.